Hi everyone. So in this video and the next two videos, we start to uh, basically discuss a very important aspect when designing recurrent neural networks and in general even feedforward neural networks uh, that do not uh, that are not recurrent. And that aspect is what statistical assumptions about the model are being made through the choice of the architecture. So when you choose an architecture, what statistical assumptions are you making about the data that you're handling and the model that represents the function, the desired function, right? So that, um, that aspect is very important even for networks that are not recurrent, but it happens that for recurrent neural networks, there are uh, key assumptions that are basically uh, very clear or very high level uh, to understand. And that, that's why it's really important to understand what the category of neural network architectures that you are choosing, uh, 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 what kind of assumptions are imposed by that class of architectures. And uh, <coughs> the first assumption which we'll discuss in this video is basically the stationarity assumption. So when we say that we have a network with a hidden to hidden recurrence like this, right? This is the input X, this is the hidden layer, and there is a connection between the hidden layer and itself, and then you have the output, right? And here, this is one time delay with parameters W. If I unfold this, if I unfold the computational graph, so let's say I have XT, HT, OT, xt plus 1, ht plus 1, ot plus 1, and there is a connection here, w. Right? It doesn't matter whether this is h of t and this is h of t plus 1, right? Or if this is h of t plus 10 and this is h of t plus 11. Why it doesn't matter? What do I mean by it doesn't matter? The same W will be used, right? So the same W is used whether in the transition from H of T to H of T plus one or H of T plus 10 to H of T plus 11 or H of T plus 100 to H of T plus 101, right? So that means what? That means that the process of the state transition, right? The internal state of the neural network represented by the hidden layers the state transition from one time step to the next, this process is stationary, right? So, and, and that, that goes back to a literature in stochastic processes that are stationary. What does it mean that the process is stationary? What really means is that the description of the process, right? You can dig into more details if you want by looking into more uh, rigorous uh, uh, definitions. But the high level, and that's what I care about here, is that basically the definition of the process does not depend on the time index, right? So it doesn't matter what the time is, right? I can tell you, like if you, uh, I can describe to you what would be the transition from H of T to H of T plus one, regardless of the value of T, right? So when is that a problem? That's a problem if, and it's obvious if you want your network, the hidden state of the network to change in a time variant manner or a non-stationary manner. So let's, let's think of examples for this. Let's say I am having a neural network that, that's processing a video of a movie, right? And that neural network is basically uh, trying to extract a trailer for the movie, right? So it's trying to extract important parts of the movie. Right, based on the expressions uh, of the actors, right? So there is some kind, maybe you can imagine some kind of facial recognition and uh, facial expression recognition, and it's trying to extract the dramatic moments, right? Now, for that task, it's really important to distinguish between the start of the video, the, the start of the movie, the middle of the movie, the end of the movie, right? So the same neural network should act differently based on the value of the time index, right? And the same thing goes for like a time sensitive audio analysis, it doesn't have to be video, or analyzing wireless traffic, 
right? Analyzing wireless traffic, for example, I'm, I have a, a neural network that's trying to do some kind of uh, smart spectrum allocation over a, wi a wireless network. So basically it's trying to identify where is the spectrum and spectrum means frequency slots. Where is the, uh, there are available frequency slots and what's the right strategy? For a neural network like that, it really matters for it to understand the time of the day because it would understand the peak of peak hours and it really makes a difference on your strategy whether you are at a peak time or an off peak time and it makes a difference in terms of the semantic interpretation of any observations of the spectrum whether these observations happen at a peak time or an off peak time right so in these cases if you want to do these time so uh, these time sensitive uh, dynamics if you want to capture these time sensitive dynamics then it really matters to employ some kind of mechanism to handle that issue right because if you just use the same reason that makes a recurrent neural network very powerful that parameter sharing over time is that it can be the main weakness for these applications and as later we will discuss in uh, in most of the recurrent neural networks used nowadays they have what's called gates and these gates allow the network to change its dynamics to change the state transition from one time step to another right and this gate itself is controlled by learnable parameters right so you can learn how to change the process of the state transitions right and uh, and actually like these layers of having learnable parameters controlling the dynamics that manage other learnable parameters these are this is the main mechanism in general by which you can have more and more levels of dynamism in uh, in capturing uh, recurrent uh, or uh, temporal correlations sounds good thank you